YOLO Composing Gloves here, and today we're going to be talking about why logs cannot be negative. So a student asked me this question. It's a good question, and getting an intuition of logs is really important. So why, why can't you have negative logs? Like, let's say I had a question, and it had log that's base 10 implied of 12 plus x equals y. And it asked you to find the domain, find domain of this, of this guy. Well, if you know the rule, you just know that the input to the log cannot be negative. No negatives. Well, that's the same thing as saying that this thing in here has to be 12 plus x. At the end of the day, whatever number this puts out that the log is going to see, it's got to be bigger than zero. And then we can solve and see that x has to be strictly bigger than negative 12 for this to work. But this, this is like, why? Why is this the case? Why must it be this way? Well, remember that logs are really exponents in disguise. This is really, we take the base to the power of out, so that's b to the power of y equals x. And there's two ways I can show you this. One is not intuitive at all, and but it, you'll see the numbers work out, and you'll be like, oh, well, yeah, of course that's impossible. But there's another way that's more intuitive. And so this b to the power y is what I want to focus on really quick. So when we have a regular number line, logs, logs are really for talking about moving around in a ratio kind of a way. So if I have a number line, and I start at 0, the next number I get to by plus 1. So if I go to the next number, that'd be 1. Plus 1 again, I get 2. Plus 1 again, I get 3. So we get this notion of each distance is worth plus 1. Perfectly sensible. Of course, though, there's another way to talk about this, as there always is. We could say, why don't we, instead of moving in a plus 1, we move in a times kind of a way. The first one's sort of strange. So let me just show you. And it, it has to do with, on the log graph, Let's draw the log graph really quick. Here's the log graph. It comes up asymptotically, crosses at 1, and goes off into the sunset and has a good time. This distance, 1 to 0, notice it becomes negative here. There's some strange stuff going on here. So this, this distance, this first bit, is a bit weird. I might talk about that in this one if I feel like we haven't talked too long. So, okay. So this first one... Let's move in base 10. So we're going to instead do a times 10. Now, we start off with 10 to the 0. So we start off at 1. So 10 to the 0, that's 1. How we get these numbers that are less than 1 is, uh, is a story that logs actually solve. Now, the next one, we do times 10. So that goes to 10 or 10 squared. So look at the, not 10 squared, 10 to the 1. And now we go up and again, and we do a times 10. We get 100. So that's 10 squared. We go again. We get 1,000. That's 10 cubed. And look at this. We have a plus 1 kind of relationship. 1, 2, 3. These point to each other. And so when we're talking about logs, that which can be turned into exponents, we're talking about moving around on a number line like this. Now... Let me show you why they can't, why you can't ever get to this side. It's just not possible. Well, if we assume a base, you can take any base. And for the sake of argument, I'm going to use 10, but I could really make this the letter B. I pick 10 just because I think it'll be nicer. It's a little less scary if it's an actual number. So here's the number 10. And let's say I, I want to get to, so this is 10. Well, would 10 to the negative, let's just say a negative power is surely must live on this side, right? Because this is the negative. So if I put 10 to the negative 3, well, that's got to be over here, right? That's the thinking. Well, let's, let's do that. Well, here's 10 to the negative 3. But this is equivalent when the exponent is negative to 1 over 10 cubed. And we see we wind up with a number actually less than 1. And lo and behold, that puts us in this region, this weird region that on our graph up here gives us negative numbers. And so we say, well, look at this. We got a negative. This puts us in the negative. How totally strange 
is this. And so this region 0 to 1, if we put in a negative number, now keep in mind this value, this value is the y value. So that's why I say negative numbers here. Now you might be going, what about x? Where is the x fit? Well, this, this puts out an x. So we're picking y's, these are our exponents, and they give us spots on the number line that are x spots, right? This would be our x axis. So these give us spots on the x axis. And that is the nature that's going on here, the nature of this, this mapping, so to speak. So it is literally impossible. You cannot get over here. Now you might say, what if I just pick an x over there? Let's say I pick an x over here. Let's pick a negative 10. I'm just going to sort of put it there. Well, all right, I'll take you up on that offer. Let's do it. So we know that the log is really this. And so if we have, let's, we're in base 10. So b is 10 to the power y equals, and we said x is negative 10. Well, can you ever raise 10 to a power y that will give you a negative number? If you make y negative, you'll get 1 over 10 to the y. Otherwise, you just have 10 to the y, both of which will always return a positive number. This will just be like 10 times itself some number of times on the bottom. This will just be a 10 times itself some number of times. There's no way to get the negative from the y to the base. It's not possible. So for this reason, it is just literally impossible to do this. You can't do it. There's no way to get a negative number in there. It's just straight up good luck. If you find a way, let me know. You'll, you'll have revolutionized mathematics and people will go, whoa, we've misunderstood all these things. But this is precisely why the graph looks like this. This is why this region becomes more and more negative because look at this. The bigger we make y, so let's say we take 10, we take 10 to the negative a bunch, a huge number. Well, that's going to turn into 1 over 10 to that huge number. Uh, I didn't check my zeros. I think that's around the same number. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3. I think you have an extra 0 here. 4, 5. So this is going to be an incredibly, a very small number. Very small. And we can see that as this number grows, let's say 10 over the 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 freaking ton, this would be the negative number. This would basically go on to infinity. Specifically, we notice here that this is after we've put it in the denominator. This y value goes to negative infinity. That's why this graph just like lunges all the way down asymptotically. We can make the number as large as we want. And it will produce an incredibly small number. This, this number is going, this number right here is going to be super dang small. And it will get smaller and smaller and smaller, but it will never be zero. So we can't ever reach zero. It'll just be incredibly small. So that's why this is asymptotic and things work out the way they do. Now, it's, now this one crossing point, it's pretty interesting. According to uh, our, our relationship here, b to the y of x, well, we say, well, if we put b, so we're in base 10, and we're at y, and we make x1, well, what value of y will give an x of 1? Well, consider this. Any number, any base, it doesn't matter the base, to the power of 0 is 1. I could have 1.035, some weird base, bring it to the power of 0, that's going to be 1. It's, it's just what 0 does to it. And so we get 1 equal 1. That's why this graph always crosses at 1. Because when you pick an x of 0, uh, not an x, when you pick a y of 0, you'll always get an x of 1. And so 1 it has this really cool property. And we could get into, I mean, think about this. This is some really weird implications when we say stuff like this, a lot of which we just sort of accept. But 0 and 1, or 1 and 0, these are strange numbers, have very strange properties. They can do some really cool and nifty things. And this is just one of the manifestations sort of of their strangeness. So hopefully this answers your questions. Now we've been dealing with the exponential version, but this all just carries over to the log version because the log version is meant to just solve this problem. So if you feel like, hey, you never really talked about logs, 
you didn't understand what a log was the whole time because a log is just is just this. This is what we're talking about. So what we're saying is for a log of some base B, so in our case, we were using base 10, but it could be any base, what X value results when we have, or in this case, we pick an X value. So we pick a point on the number line and we say, what is the exponent necessary that this base must be at in order to produce it? And so this, that's what the, the log is asking. And we could have, you know, we could have log base two, we could have the natural log, which has a, a really weird base, base E. And e is, e is just an incredible number. The further you go in math, the more you'll sort of be mystified by E. Pi gets on, gets attention very early, but E is just, just as dang crazy. So hopefully you are now a little more enlightened to how this stuff works. Uh, logs are, are really quite incredible tools. Uh, it's just one of the ways sort of the universe works. And it's kind of wild that we can describe it with, with math so often. Uh, unless you believe that all of it can be explained with math, in which case we could have a, a really interesting discussion. Uh, so if you have any questions about this, let me know. Drop them in the comments. Subscribe. Support me on Patreon. I appreciate it. I am still going to school for electrical engineering. And have a blessed day. Okay.